So when we left off in part two, we had a working board with no sound and very, very bad snow picture. And I tried to troubleshoot this. I um, mailed Matthias and we went back and forth via email and we tried to desolder some uh, resistors, um, check the soldering on all um, the pins on the backside, stuff like that, and to no avail. So this morning I woke up and I thought, hey, this snowy picture looks a lot like interference. And interference often comes from some uh, voltage related issues. So just for fun, I took this power supply, which I used for all my testing, and I replaced it with this power supply, which is, I guess, a laptop power supply or something like this. Much better. Had to fiddle on a matching connector. And the result, I will show you the result. The result is this. A super crisp, sharp. There's still some bleeding, but there's no snow like before. So, and that looks fantastic. This is the S video side of things. So, I'm using the S video uh, connector, which I had to solder on the board for testing. And I'm glad I did that because right now, composite only works if the S video cable is plugged in to the board on the S-Video connector and into the TV. So that makes me think, what could that be again? Um, yeah, if I wiggle the S-Video connector, I sometimes even lose the composite signal. So let me switch over to the composite. Interestingly, the S-Video connector only has um, two ground pins and chroma and luma, so there's only four pins that are connected. There's no voltages involved or anything like that. So there must be still some kind of fault in the video circuitry. The other thing I did is that I um, soldered on this voltage regulator, which ups the voltage from five volts, which comes from the VC in from the red wire and the black ground wire and turns it up to nine volt. You may remember these from, I guess, Retro Packages 4 or 3, where I got these in a bundle and feeds in 9 volt back into the board. And by doing that, I could put in the um, SID chip, which is an 8580R5. And if I switch on sound, yeah, there's sound. So that's progress. Um, so what, what we have to do now is we have to figure out what the composite problem is and um, mount the screen, get the keyboard working because there's some issue too. Um, only a few keys are working on occasion. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get started. Okay, I have to give you a little wider angle here. Um, so if I switch on the machine and this monitor is now connected, then you can see that the S video goes into the TV, which works fine. And the composite should show up over there on the screen. But it says no signal. So that made me think that there is actually a trim over on this side, which says video sync fixed trim. So why don't we try that out? B 
because it has to be a sync uh, problem because um, I can see that the monitor tries to get something but oh, oh look at that That works just fine. <laughs> Look at that. It's actually a picture on the game screen. And this, by the way, is the screen I want to use in this project, which is a 7-inch screen with two video ins. Um, it's not as video, it's just um, composite. But that looks reasonably okay. Very nice. Great. Okay, so that is one important next step. Now we have still to figure out why the thing only works if, S, if the S-Video cable is uh, connected. Let me quickly try if, if this is still true. It's all still wired up like hell. So uh, we'll pull the cable and hey, the signal stays. It works. Oh man, that's awesome. Okay, that is one huge next step because now this thing is independent of my TV, which is very good. So now all that's left is to connect. Oh, and it's gone. Oh no, why did it lose the signal? It's still trying, let me try the fix again. There it is again. That's not cool. Oh, there it is again. Man, what is this? Okay, so I guess we have to check the wiring because this looks strange. Okay, I did rewire a few things. Um, still the composite is a bit fiddly, so I have to push on the S-Video. Um, sometimes, but I just decided that I will get rid of my cable management, which is right now only these um, plug cables, and um, we'll open the monitor to begin with the final wiring. So I guess the keyboard is one missing part and the composite, which is fiddly right here, is a missing part, but you can already put this together and have kind of the handheld look that thing is going for. So yeah, I will now work on the screen. And there are a few, a few screws here which keep this thing together. And I think these two here, oh, just voided the guarantee, which is a shame on this thing. By the way, this is a, an Amazon warehouse deal. Doesn't move, so maybe we have to undo this clip here. And I paid, I guess, twenty-three dollars, no uh, euros, for this. So I guess this is an okay price. Okay. Now, how do we get in here? There are no more screws. There are these holes on the side, which we check. Yeah, first one, <coughs> second one, and there's third one down there. No, it's completely clipped together. Ah, okay, there, clips the bottom. Hope this goes back together. Okay, and here we are. Ah, okay, there's this kind of connector. Seems like we first have to find out which is which here. Okay, so I plug this in. As you can see, there's a picture. And now we have to find out which um, cable is which. And I'm betting that the red one is 
12 volts and the black one is ground so let's check this yeah so there's our power connection and then we have a green wire which comes out over here and I have no idea what this is for maybe some kind of um, activation wire or something like this because this is normally a screen um, to uh, for a car to drive backwards so it's a backwards camera and I'm using this for my purposes so here next question is which one is video one and which one is video two but doesn't really matter because I believe this is ground here so let's check if this is ground yeah that's ground too so the black one is ground and the yellow is one of the videos and the white is one of the videos okay can work with that so I have to wire up these pads get a cable out of here and off we go nice take four wires from here one two three four perfect okay so yellow will be video orange will be video ground red will be 12 volts and brown will be ground for 12 volts okay and we will just bring this out here and that will go into the c64 on the other side so as always let's first put some solder on the wires it makes it much easier to solder them to the pads which are not meant to be soldered to so that makes it double important to make this to do this right so let's start with the one on the right side which is 5 volts which is the red one and that's on too nice okay so we have to give this a little strain relief okay yeah, I will just bring the cable out down here and we will also put some strain relief on there okay so yes we should maybe test this before we close it up and we will wire up the 12 volts first and then we will wire up the video okay cables are prepared so let's first hook up the 12 volts which are here let me quickly check how we go do that yes that's good from this side okay that's on there now we do the videos because the ground for the 12 volts will come from the game port which is over here and we can do this now So the screen should get power now. Let's check this first, maybe. So if we switch this on, there's the power to the screen. Nice. So that works. That's good. And now let's hook up the video, which is the yellow cable on the video side and the orange cable on the ground.
Okay, looks good. Everything hooked up. Let's try. So after some head scratching, because the connection didn't come through and I had to reconnect the um, plug connector, turned out that this right here is not the video signal. The video signal for the second port, or for the first port is over here. No, the second port. So this is ground, this is correct, but this right here is the ground wire for the other video connection. So I have to resolder this to go there and then it should work. Okay, so the screen is closed up again and in order to not get the cable smashed again, I will have to dremel away a little material here. And then we put that mounting bracket back on there. Uh, that's, that's better. So I did the test and now the video works through this little ribbon cable here. And all that's left is the keyboard and the game controllers because, uh, with the controller ports, because they don't work either. Only one um, fire button works and that is not enough and um, the joystick ports you can clip on don't work either. I already switched through three CIA chips. It doesn't make a difference. So there must be something on the board. So let's see. If the screen works. And here we go. Nice. Okay, so this is finally coming together. Very happy. Okay, so I'm working on the keyboard connector and there are a few things that you should know. First of all, and that is very confusing because I didn't know and um, didn't check or there's no documentation for that. You have to have these two pins connected to the pins on the other side of the board to get a video signal and sound. So sound and video are connected over these two pins. It only says audio here, but I assume that one of these two wires is a ground wire and that is needed so that the um, composite signal can work. So that's important to know. That is the first thing to get a stable picture on the screen. Then I try to make sense why some of the keys are not working. And the only key working properly is the number one key. And well, I did dig a little bit deeper into this whole issue. So let me show you. So the keys on the C64 are made up in a matrix. And this pretty much means that at the crossing of these lines, there's, for example, on the crossing of line zero and line D, if you um, connect these via a switch, you get a seven. And these uh, columns and rows are on the keyboard connector. So if you look here, you can see that, for example, um, the A row, is on pin 20, B is on 19, and so forth. And the column zero is on pin 12, and so forth. So if you take a look at the wiring diagram of the CIA chip, where all this lands, and this is a CIA number one, or the keyboard and controller CIA. And if you take a look, you can see that these columns and rows are directly connected to data lines on the CIA. So column number one, uh, column zero, for example, is connected to pin two, column one is um, 
on pin 3 and so forth. And we have row 0, which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H on this model. And since this is a wiring, wiring diagram, you can see that the pins are not in the, the correct position. Um, you can see that pin 24 is up here and pin 39 is down here. If you take a look at the real pin out of the CIA with the right pin numbering, then you can see that all these data lines are actually on the, whatever you call this, left side, if the notch is on top. And you can measure if a key press occurs. And that is what I do here right now. So I have the scope hooked up. And you can see down here, there's the keyboard CIA up here. It's not too good to see. Is this run here? And I have the scope connected to data line uh, to um, data line 10 or pin 10, which is PB0 or A, which in the matrix is this A. So if I press any key that lies on the A row, the um, this row should activate, or this pin should activate. So let's try this out. Let me switch the machine on. And you can see here, the machine lies flat. Here's the screen. If I press 1, you can see how the level changes on the scope. So that is a clear indicator that the line actually is OK, at least for the first pin, which is data line um, A down here on the connector. Can't see that right now. Let me show you. So if we take the connector like this, there's pin A, there's this is a white wire down here, which connects to the board, and this line should be good. So in theory, all the um, all the characters on this line, on the A line, should work. But if I try key okay. number two, nothing happens. As you can see, it doesn't get a signal, doesn't get anything. If I press one, signal is high. If I press two, nothing happens. So what's going on here? Why doesn't two do anything? The easiest way to check if the keys are working is to disconnect the keyboard and to just go and um, connect wires directly to the matrix. So we can simply short these. And if we short D and 2, we should, for example, get a G on the screen. So that is what we are trying now. We're going to disconnect the keyboard and try to just stick cables in. So let's see how that works. So in order to make this a little bit more readable, I will um, put the screen, the um, S video out on the TV and disconnected the, um, let's call this internal monitor. And what I want to do is I want to show you. So let's check what we want to do. We want to do, let's say, um, A0, which should be the one. We know that works. So one character I didn't see yet is the X. And that is C3. So if we connect uh, pin 3 or pin 18 here and pin 9 there, there should be an X on the screen. So let's try that out. 9. And that gives us an X. Look at that. So that works. And if we want the C, we just go one to the left works too. And the F, that is just walking down the pin row. That is good news because that means the CIA chips are completely okay. They actually do respond and bring out the characters. So now there could be two faults. The first fault could be that 
this wiring doesn't simply work. Maybe the cables are too long, I don't know. But since that wire actually works and the other two wires actually work, I can't see why that is. Um, maybe it's the resistance of the cable, I don't know. The other thing could be that somewhere in this keyboard matrix there's an error, but I don't think so. And wait, we could actually test that, I guess. We could also put the multimeter in here and check if, if we push a button, we get some result here. Let's do this next. So in order to test if the actual keys and the keyboard matrix on this board are working, we have to take another look at the keyboard matrix. And if we turn this around, you can see there's the keyboard connector, which is down right here. And what we do is we simply um, put the probes of the multimeter in continuity mode. And then we put in wires and push the button. And if the button, uh, if it beeps, we know that this button actually works on this matrix and that the signal um, comes to the connector. So we already know that the signals are on this connector right here. I did change this. I have to change this again because that connector still doesn't work. Um, but let's first check the keys and then we'll take care of the connector. So um, first I have some clamps here that will make it much easier to test this whole stuff. And I will just um, put one wire here and one wire here. And then we will first try something we already know that works, which is A0. And A0 is pin number one for A. So this right here is pin number one. And the other one to put in is zero and zero is um, pin number 12. So we have to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. From this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now if we press the one key, this should beep. And it doesn't. But it does for the back key. So I assume that I went one pin to fire. Yeah, that's true. It's pin zero. So I have to go one pin back. And now if I press the one key, it beeps. Okay, so that works. And we could go along and test every single of these keys. And I did that indeed. And all the keys work just fine, except for the restore key, which didn't work. And that was due to a missing pad down here on the connector. I pulled this pad when I tried to resolder this. And I had to do a botch wire, which goes from here down to the key here. And now even that works. And this is a restore circuit. And that is isolated from the rest of the matrix. So restore has its own pins um, on the far side here. And if we put these connectors on the reset, uh, on the restore lines, then if we hit restore, which let me just check on this keyboard. Uh, let me put this on. Restore keys right here, and as you'll see, it works. So this connector delivers all the right signals we would expect. This connector puts all the right signals to the CIAs. So the only fault that is possible is that this connection between this pin header and this does not work. So we have to come up with a solution for that. 
And for that, I will desolder the pin header on this side, which is unfortunate because, let me just get this off. Um, let me show you. So if you take a closer look at the board and you turn it around, you see that this connector is actually soldered under this CIA. So I have to take out the CIA. Let's quickly do this. And you can see the connector is soldered under the socket. And to desolder under a socket, I guess that could be pretty interesting. Uh, interesting. I'm thinking about cutting these plastic dividers here, but then I lose a lot of stability on this connector. So I'm not con completely confident to do this, but I have to desolder this because this does not work. These don't, mat uh, don't match up in here because the, um, the distance is too big, even if I take these out, which I have to, um, but they don't meet. So. That's a shame. And I could have seen this earlier because if you look from the side, you can see that the connector does not go above the chips and that this connector doesn't go above the chips or the ICs. And that makes it pretty much impossible that these two could meet because the chips would meet and these connectors are pretty much on top of each other, but not inside each other, which they should be. Yeah, so I guess it's time to grab the desoldering iron and get desoldering again. This project had a lot of desoldering, not just a lot of soldering. So I guess let me get on with this. And instead of showing you how I curse and get angry and stuff because I have to, I have to desolder this, when I was filming this, I also reached 500 subscribers. So. I will just put in a little segment, a little thank you segment, instead of showing me soldering. And after this segment, which I'm very sorry for, um, we continue with the project. Enjoy. Okay, so that didn't go as planned. Um, my desoldering station died. Tried to fix it for six hours. Now it's the next day and I got this uh, monster of a desoldering gun from Amazon. And well, it's unusual. I don't know if you know this thing or have this thing, but if you press a button, it actually has recoil. So that's annoying because it almost trashed through my board. Because if you put it down and push the button, it goes <laughs> and the other thing is it really sucks. It does literally, but it also spits. So if we take a look at the board, let me quickly show you. You can see there's gunk all over the place. And it took me quite a while to desolder this, uh, this pin header. And I had to cut the inner legs of the uh, socket to get there. Looks good. No. OK. 
keys still don't work. That can't be. Oh man. What's wrong now? It seems like we have some more digging to do. That's unfortunate. Okay, it's the next day again. And I had a crazy idea. What if we take off this part and put a real C64 keyboard on the keyboard connector? And that should actually work because, according to Matthias, this should be pin compatible. So if we take a look at these connectors, they are the same. The only thing we won't have is sound, because the sound is transferred over here. And um, this bo board won't be powered, so that's the only thing we have to deal with. So let's stick this on here. And see. Ah, shit. It's keyed, so that's not as easy to do as I thought. So I have to wire this up with the good old cables. So let's switch it on and see what it does. And it works just fine. Except for the cursor, which won't move. That's interesting. And return won't work. So there seems to be one connection failing. And we have to check the keyboard matrix to see which one that is. <coughs> and if we take a look at the chart, we can see that the cursor keys and return lie on H. And H is pin number 13. So there's either a fault on the keyboard, which could be, or could be a problem with the CIA. So I will now test all these pins if they have continuity and find out why pin H doesn't work, which is actually pin 17 on the CIA, which, is which should connect to pin 9 on the connector. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we get continuity. Look at that. So the question is, Why don't we get line H when we connect the keyboard when the CIA and the connector are actually properly connected? So I will check all the other pins and then we will get to the bottom of this. But this might mean that there's actually a cold solder joint. Okay, so the continuity checked out on all the pins now. I did even check from the connector on the pin up here. and. I'm confident to say that this thing is sorted in completely correctly and it should work. So for sanity's sake, I will only be wiring up the um, lines of the keyboard that I will test, that is the H line. So all I need is cursor down and I don't get a cursor down. And why is that? After a lot of fiddling and twiddling, I found out that the trace between a pin header, the one which is responsible for the H um, row, wasn't connected to the CIA on the other side. So I made a botch wire to gap that bridge and it um, goes in here on the CIA pin 2. Um, and yeah, now it works. So all the keys work but still the connection between these two boards is dodgy so 
if I plug in a C64 keyboard, every every key works. If I plug this in, only sound and uh, power works, and the one key, still the one key. So since I replaced this thing here already, this pin header, I'm now going to replace the other side completely. So I ordered new pin headers for this one too. I'm going to desolder this with my new super sucker desolder gun. So after doing some botch wiring and stuff, and you can see this is not the prettiest job in the world, I finally got it running. And this is not due to the complexity of the project or anything, but just to my pure dumbness, as is so often. I did indeed have a cold solder joint up over here. Um, and I did remove the connectors, which keep these two boards together. Changed them because I thought these connectors weren't good. Um, did testing all the time. I don't. I think I did. I think I did about 20 hours of testing and just figuring out how all this works. I learned a lot about all this keyboard stuff, how it works. Wrong way around. Um, Matthias sent me pictures of the um, internal working of the board so that I could figure out which wire or which uh, trace was broken. And he was invaluable to get this project done. So if you are, so if you are doing this project, and this is not a complicated project by any means, um, but you have to make sure that you solder correctly and all that stuff. There are some traces on this board that didn't take solder too well. So best way to move here is to put flux on all the solder pads before soldering. Um, leave the solder, soldering iron on the pad for a few seconds and apply solder then because else the solder won't take. I had some of these solder blobs um, on the tips of the pins but they didn't go through so that there was no connection. Um, in reality, this is two boards which are pretty much separated. They are only four pins or three pins that have to be connected um, to make this work via the, um, via the composite video. That is these four pins right here is the ground this botched wire here is five volts and this five volts is super needed and the second wire here is the audio connection which you need um, without that you have no sound so if all that is connected you have pretty much a working c64 without a keyboard you can actually use a normal c64 keyboard on this and i did this um, as you may have seen yeah and at this point all that is left is to put on my 3D printed um, buttons and the D-pad. I already I did screw this in. This is not the best idea, I guess, to do this, but it works. Um, and to mount the screen. And I had this 3D printed bracket made to put the screen on this fits right into this notch on the back side. You can slide it in here and it fits. But then, while looking for some suitable botch wires which were thin enough, I stumbled upon this. And this is actually the holder that came with the monitor. And you just screw this in on the back side. Yeah, that is not the way to do this. And then you have a monitor stand. And it turns out that this monitor stand almost fits perfectly on this plate. And I had to, I plan to put this uh, right here on here. And as you can see, this fits perfectly. Here's the finished product.
but this right here is much more flexible. So if you're using the C64 with a joystick adapter, which is right here, and you can plug it in on the side and use normal joysticks, then you can actually turn the screen up and can use it lying flat on the surface. Or you can turn it like this and can use it in handheld mode. And I thought about constructing that in 3D but and print it out, but it's already done. So all I have to do is, um, as you can see, the the holes don't quite match up. I have to extend the holes a little and then it will fit. And that is what I will do now. Extend the holes with the drill. So in order to get this completed, we have to put on these 3D printed buttons and these um, pads, which I salvaged from a Nintendo controller. And you can find the files for this button, for these buttons and the D-pad um, in the description of this video. I had to cut this this was one piece, but this white uh, contact pads uh, were one piece. You had to cut them down to fit on the board. Like that. And the D-pad doesn't matter, has a knob in the middle, so you can just put it in and go your way. Okay, then comes the part of the fitting. And that's a bit fiddly, so let's take a screwdriver and move the buttons a little. But as you can see, fits nicely. Very good. So we can already put in the two screws at the bottom. Okay, so that's on there. Now to our screen mount. And we will, I guess, mount this up here first. And you can see the screws are a bit longer so that I can fit this on here. Oh, this fits. Yes, it does. Nice. Almost. Now it does. Great. And we put in the rest of the screws. And it's not a problem that these edges uh, go over the, the machine because the screen is much bigger than this. And now we mount the screen. And here we are. The final product. Looks great. And I guess I uh, owe to you to show you how it works. Let's switch it on. And here we are. Let's do the classic. Hello. 
world program. and run and here we go hello world on the world's smallest c64 yeah that is uh, pretty much the machine so let's uh, plug in a game i guess and i have sam's journey here and we have the cartridge port up here let's plug it in switch it on The screen has sync issues, so I had to fiddle around quite a lot to get it working like this. Um, you can still use the um, S-Video connector, and um, there's a little um, potentiometer inside here to um, adjust to the frequency, but yeah, that is uh, pretty much the machine. So what do you think? Leave me a comment. Um, there's still stuff to do um, right now. I can only use cartridges because um, I have not put in the Pi1541, which could be put in here, but I have to get a Pi0 for that. Um, I'm also planning on replacing the D-pad with the switch um, joystick thing. And of course I want to add a battery pack, so there are two um, soldering points for a battery pack or a um, power bank. And um, that would be interesting too. So I will do that, but for now, this project is finished. And ah, you can also put it on the table. Put up the screen, plug in the joystick ports, do this. And then um, yeah, you have to put it on something because the joystick's face down in my case. Don't know if this is on intention. I guess I just saw that this the wrong way around. Um, and then you can use this in a, in a let's call this desktop mode. That's quite interesting, I guess. Yeah, that is uh, the handheld C64 by Matthias. So thanks again for watching all the videos. Thanks to Matthias for all the help. He was invaluable. Um, and as I said, if you do this project, make sure you get good components, good connectors. Um, make sure that you know what you're doing. Try to solder correctly, because this will bite you in the ass in the end if you don't. Um, do it right. Take your time. I rushed a little into this. Um, and if you need any help, building this, just drop me a comment under this video or any of the three videos and I will comment and if I can help, I love to help. I did learn a lot, so this gave me a deep, deep dive into the C64, um, how the CIA works, um, how the keyboard works, the keyboard matrix, um, how this is all connected. So yeah, that would be an, an interesting video in itself. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and uh, bye bye.
Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.